Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the Kaiser Redux mod as the Kingdom of Romania and of course the Legion of Archangel Michael the King, Nikolai the First, as well as our Captain Cornelia Corgiano. I mean, we are just... Romania is truly on top. I'm not sure if this will be the last episode. There's a there's a decent chance uh, that it might be. We do have a, have a decent bit to get through in the focus tree yet though. Maybe second last episode or something like that. Anton still battling away with the third international. Yeah, Russia, very disappointing this game. I mean, their army is 1.48 million men. Congratulations, Russia. You've got an extra 200,000 men compared to the Romanian army. I mean, what are you doing? You know, how many, how many puppets do you have? Do you have puppets? You do have puppets. Congratulations, you've got Mongolian Armenia's puppets. We've got Bulgaria, Turkey, Hungary, Slovakia... Uh, West Ukraine, Poland, Prussia. I mean, W's on W's, am I right? Anyway, we are back. Time to accept all these non-aggression packs from the International. Mostly. Yeah. The Egyptians want to send us volunteers. No, but I, I, I do appreciate that. You are social conservatives. Off them. Pretty much. Yeah, it's kind of just you and the Libyans and the Syrians and more Arabs. Obviously, all of, them, all of them are Arabs, but, uh, yeah. An easily rollable faction, if I do say so myself. I love how Iraq always leaves. Very odd. Anyway, we are back. Yes, indeed. I'll be fixing the borders momentarily. An auxiliary police force. Is, am I reading the right... Yeah, no, actually. Question of the intelligence service. The legionary movement, already atypical amongst organizations of its kind, also took the daring step of creating its own inter internal intelligence service, the SIMLR, uh, that one, uh, the information service of the legionary movement of Romania, while a relatively small organization and nowhere near as efficient as the state intelligence service, it nevertheless helps ensure internal cohesion among the movement's ranks, and reminds me of uh, Kudapov's inner line within the uh, ROVS. With the expansion of legionary power and influence, however, many members, especially those affiliated with the Radical Caucus, want to expand its capacities, turning it into a full-fledged auxiliary of the SSI, uh, to be led by Horia Cosmovici, a pro protege of SEMA and Kent Cusino. Other voices within the movement, including the SIMLR's current leader, Aeon Belgia, clamor that tangling with the SSI would only result in bureaucratic tanglings and would hamper its efficiency, and that if the SSI were to be roused, it could undermine us from its very lofty position. Now, this may be too dangerous a gamble. Keep it reduced and maintain Belgea. 25 political power and Kojandu tightens his grip. Of course, we have an incredible lead over everybody else. So, we get to, uh, to kind of to, to, to blow out a bit here. So, we're going to expand it to an auxiliary, uh, auxiliary intelligence service and appoint Cosmovici to lead it. Uh... Minus 5% base stability, the Radicals gain power, activate decision, and expansion of legionary intelligence. Kenzu Kuzino and his supporters will greatly increase their power. So we're doing this because we are so far ahead that we can afford to take uh, liberties like this in exchange for nice little buffs. So we can see our expansion of legionary intelligence, and we'll get counterintelligence plus one, operative slots plus one, and the Radicals gain power. So, you know, we can afford this kind of stuff. So uh, that's why I, I kept doing the... Uh, Rain in the Legion stuff because it's simply um, simply put us so far ahead that we can do all we, that we that it afforded us the opportunity to engage in all these decisions. Now, an auxiliary police force is all the movement reigns supreme in Romania at this moment. Concerns have been raised over just how loyal the police could be within the new state. In spite of the movement's control of the Ministry of the Interior, the police proper still has not had the best of relationships with the legionaries, as immortalized in the killing of police prefect uh, Mansiu back in the early 1920s. An unlikely solution has emerged, especially pushed by the movement's radicals, aided along by, I, uh, by LWC sympathizers. Create a special auxiliary police force recruited from amongst movement members, which is to collaborate with the regular police force in a variety of matters. Supporters consider that this will further strengthen the movement's power and will be of use towards achieving the legionary victory, while opponents consider that its very vaguely defined capacities and powers will only lead to abuses and to the Romanian people losing faith in the legion as its national and spiritual guiding force, claiming that arresting people on a whim is not what the captain would desire. What should we be done? Uh, what should be done in this debate? We risk becoming what we fought against, focus on reforming the regular police instead, 5% based ability, or establish the legionary police and appoint a general uh, patrol, uh, patrol, uh, patrol, Petrovicescu. Maybe. Five, minus 5% 5 based ability, the radicals gain power yet again, activate decision, organization of the, legion, of the legionary police, P police, police, Kant Cusino and his supporters will greatly increase their power yet again. That suits me just fine. 
60 days, we get 60 political power and 6% base stability. So we get an extra 1% base stability in comparison to the other option. Uh, the Radicals, again, of course, we did take the minus 5% hit, so uh, obviously it would have been better to go for the other one in terms of base stability. But no, we're going for buffs here. And the Radicals gain power again. Now, finally get to roll on a bit. Uh, yes, it's time to work out these borders. Uh, obviously, we're going to be taking Podolia. So that's kind of... A, okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. Uh, Katarinoslav... Goliath, Evi Let's Grad, Cherkasi, this one. Basically, as far as there, we're going to give that to Western Ukraine. Oh, forgot about Carson. Uh, Venizia, too. And Jotomir, perfect. Obviously, we're going to be taking that. And I think the Poles can actually get cores on that. So then we will take these ones. Don't worry, I know I've yet to work out the industry and the resources of each of the uh, newly conquered territories. I will be doing that. Now, Mark Rivna. Uh, Valinia, Policia, Forestia, Pinsk, you already have claims on good, and cores. Do the same for Belts, Lvov, Drohabik, Stanislavov, Tarnapil. Uh, yeah, I suppose you'll have to. We'll have to rather. Nice. So that should be like that. That's perfect. Air Doctrine, perfect. Hunt and destroy. God, with that reduced... Uh, with the redu with the air crew surveys reducing the cost of Air Doctrine, it really, God, you get through it so quickly. You can get through it in, in a year easily if you're fighting in enough air battles. Now, hopefully we'll get a few events talking about uh, Fate of X and Fate of Y. Now, Klim grows a commission. 5% base stability. Uh, Bastrita Nassau gets one building slot, one civilian factory. The Legionary Worker Corps gains power. Georg Klim and Dimitriou uh, Groza, both experienced Legionary activists and high profile members of the Legionary Worker Corps, have come forth with a proposal to help Romania's industrial development. Not only are the potential economic benefits immense, but the rapid growth of the urban worker wing of the party will be invaluable as generations will owe their prosperity to us. North German Union, non aggression pact. Yeah, sure. Be nice to have a little rebuilding phase, a period of peace. We've been in near constant war since uh, 1937. A bit more excavation, yes. Now we're going to send up the entire army, which is completely excessive, but it's good to have these shows of force, to Denmark. Romania, I'm sure we have a decent amount of cash. Ooh, yes, time to uh, adjust the stockpile once more, I think. Anti-air, we can hold back on that. Honestly, I think I do want to build anti-air, but I want it to be specifically all our own anti-air, which is incredibly wasteful, and not at all what countries do in real life. You know, when I mean, you take Germany in World War II, they're always using other countries' equipment and so on, and many, many other countries, most countries do it, but I'm not going to do it, because I am picky. Perfect. Get those new aircraft deployed. Ooh, nice. Size of our air force. 37,000 men. Not bad. Navy. Ooh, 76. Yes, the uh, Ukrainian fleet. Well, the Tsar's fleet, actually. Oh, what did that happen? Where are you? Where's the other one? Holy position of the Eastern Mediterranean. Oh, yeah, that's right. I docked the Crete, didn't I? That is uh, fine. Yep, yeah, you can stay out there. Why not? Actually, what you can do is go fucking uh, raid Malta. Yeah, because they're being a pain in the ass right now. 
Am I... Why, why aren't you moving? Oh! Great, of course, because the Belgrade Pact uh, was dismantled. Well, Greece, I mean, of course you're going to join us in the Eurasian bloc. I mean, you know, we're best pals. We gave you a ton of land. We fought a bunch of wars together. Yeah, Civil War. No, it nearly clicked that. There we are. Whew, that was close. My bad, Greece. Ends of glories. Don't get any big ideas. You can do the first couple of those, but nothing about uh, taking land. No, sir. Actually, just before I do start doing stuff here, you don't have a navy, do you? Because it's going to be awkward if you have a navy. You don't have a navy, go. Hmm. Now, the Reseda reorganization, a long-established center of ironworking and heavy industry. Reseda has long prospered off the back of its heavy industry, industry that has at last fallen into our hands. While the facilities are held by the Austrian STEG a concern, the obvious problem of the Austrian railway enterprise owing the works has arisen and will be solved by gradually splitting off its assets within Romania. The railway is proper going to the Romanian Railway State Company and the receipt of works going to a new industrial concern to be named Uznele C. Dominil. Rosita, Rosita Domains and Works, or UDR for short. Known iron importer and businessman Max Auschnitt has managed to position himself as administrator of the vast works while the transition is being carried out. And rumor has he, uh, rumor, and rumor has he will seek to become the main manager of it. While the king may personally be fine with such a move, considering Auschnitt's ties with the royal family, his business associate turned rival Nikolai Malaxa. Ah, yes, we will, we will, we will side with Malaxa, of course. Uh, is protesting this takeover. He has put forward one of his men. Engineer Virgil Ionescu, known donor to the Friends of the Legion Association Regional Commander and a seasoned Malax employee whom shall lead the new works forward for the choice rest in His Majesty's hands. No, no, it does not. Ionescu support carries the day. 35 political power, 3% NAPOP support. Now we organize Reseda Steel Works. The Reseda Works are significant producers of steel in the newly liberated regions. Until now, they were owned by an Austrian firm and will be reorganized into a properly Romanian firm, the UDR. Unlocks UDR as a design company. Fantastic. It's actually an artillery company, which we have not had the entire time. Use two civilian factories 60 days. Carass of Aaron gets one building slot of one civilian factory. Now, together now and forever. This day will become known as the Great Union Day when the old principalities of Wallachia, Malto Moldavia, and Transylvania are finally reunited. Unlike Michael the Brave's union, this one will be permanent and the remaining people will finally be together now and forever. Replace integration of Transylvania with the Great Union. Effective change. Daily political power gain plus 0 0.25. 5% division recovery. 10% base conflict or 10% uh, stability and conflict support. And 10% nap op support. Fantastic. And in the Legion, I honestly don't think we have to. We're so far ahead already. Now, we don't appear to be getting those uh, events, unfortunately. Don't think so. Ah, that's a shame. I was hoping we would. Okay, in that case, we will return Polish land. Yes, return all land to them. As you can see, they just became absolutely huge. And we retain all the land that we want. Pretty much just uh, one state east of uh, the river. That's all we really wanted from the Ukrainians. And here we have this. Rump Ukraine, you kind of might, might be drawing uh, reminiscences of um, Red Flood Ukraine, but it's obviously Red Flood Ukraine also has all of this stuff. Um, this is a uh, very Rump Ukraine, but it's not as Rump as it could be uh, in the Wrangel series. That is not progressing, um, but that I still do want to do eventually because I'd never give up on something like that. It, it's going to be even more Rump than this. It's going to be hilariously Rump, actually. Uh, Return Russian lands. No. No, I don't think so. Actually, you know what? Here's probably a good thing to do. Remove, yeah. Mark all states of us. Remove your cores. I don't think you have any. Uh, then remove all your claims. Do the exact same with uh, Ukraine. West Ukraine. You like how I named it West Ukraine? Yeah, I like it. Well, well not named it, but just kept it. I think if they actually had Kiev, they could be... Uh, no, 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 they have to be fully independent. doesn't matter whether or not they had Kiev. Honestly, yeah, I, I did take Kiev. Should I give them Kiev? Yeah, I'm going to give them Kiev. Simply because... Uh, the Russians are really... Just, I don't know. They were terrible this game. They were incredibly, incredibly poor performance. Mark all states, add cores, yeah. 
make sure you do that. Just give you some factories. Two and two, it's way more than that. Yeah, 911. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now we have reached our peak Romanian borders. Huge, aren't we? Yes, we are. Suppose we could take Stanislavov in order to link up the two here so as not to have the impassable terrain, but no, no. This is filled with Poles, Ukrainians, and small hats. Uh, so we will not be taking that. Now, the rest of that, that is all fine. Just have another quick look. at it. Let's have a quick look at our resistance. Yeah, there's some resistance. Not too much, though. Uh, that's okay, mostly. Now, a quick thing that we are going to do. I'm going to go all the way up here. Yeah, decision dot no checks. So, pacification of uh, uh, Sequimea can't happen. Sequimea is right here, but we've already core. We already got a core on it, so naturally we can't gain compliance in the state that we already have core on. So we'll never be able to do this. So we're going to do to, to uh, do decision dot no checks. The Hungarian majority region in eastern Transylvania will be difficult to integrate into Greater Romania, for they are openly hostile to it. Nevertheless, the army and the gendarmerie will make sure to maintain order and ensure that land reform can be properly enacted, prioritizing local Romanians. Of course, they will soon understand that all of Transylvania is to remain Romanian, regardless of their hostility. For 60 days, weekly war support minus 0.5%. Uh, Sequimea gets the following resistance target minus 25%. Daily compliance gain plus 0.3%. Unlock decision integration of Sequimea. I know I'm butchering all of this. I don't speak Romanian. Well, not all of it, but most of it. Quite a significant amount of it. Now, who else are we realistically going to invade? We already have quite... I would like to get Italy. Italy would be super nice. It'd be nice to have something... Someone, you know... Someone to balance out the Russians, basically. Uh, they've got a... They've got a significant... Of course, I haven't really done the, uh, the funnies yet. With several of them. No, Kingdom of Bohemia could be a great addition. They're pa they're pat off. Uh, obviously, they hate the Cindys and the Totalists. And it'd be great to have another independent power because our faction is quite short of independent powers. as us, the Yugoslavs, the Greeks, and the Russians, and that's it. Obviously, the po the Poles are big. I'm kind of shaping up the Poles to become an independent power. Um, obviously, with giving them so much land, I plan the Prussians eventually becoming an independent power as well. But uh, apart from that, it's puppets all the way through. I'll take the Danes here. Oh, it's actually the Swedes went up taking it. Okay, they do have a navy, yeah, so I'll leave that alone. Uh, I'll just take that. Thank you very much. Now, the end of Weitzer and of Marta. With the Romanian seizure of Transylvania, many companies located within the area's borders had to reprofile themselves to adapt to the new reality. And the Marta factory of Arad is no exception, created in 1909 as a subsidiary of Ostor Daimler and initially. Producing licensed Westinghouse cars, the factory grew to become a developing force in the area alongside Johann Weitzer's locomotive and wagon company. In spite of difficulties caused by the outbreak of the Velkrieg during which the Marta factory had to cease production, the two continued onwards over with the Romanian acquisition of Transylvania. The future of the two became uncertain. Cut off from their old markets and having to bear with, their, with the land's new rulers, the two factories decided to move along with the times, maintaining the Weitzer Society's focus on rolling stock. While Marta began to take a more junior role, the two entities merged in order to more efficiently fulfill their niche within the new order, taking on a new identity. Welcome, Aster Arad. Arsana gets building stuff and a civilian factory. Fantastic. Denmark as a republic, for some reason, even though you literally have a king. Nice flag, though. Reminds you of the Skrin symbol in uh, Command and Conquer. Now, you, you took that. I, I didn't want you to do that, I'm afraid. So I'm going to immediately take all of these... Uh, at core for Prussia. Hand these back over to you. Congratulations. I wish you wish I could give you Hamburg, but it's very much this West Hanover is fine. I don't mind this, but Hamburg specifically, I want to give to uh, Prussia. It's, just, it's north of the river, and I want that. Damn it! I suppose you could say the same about Magdeburg and uh, Leipzig and Chemnitz and Dresden. But uh, what can you do? By the way, we have a hefty Prussia right here. Now, I suppose it's time to start moving our troops to somewhere more suitable. Reckon North Germany is a good target.
Uh, yeah, that's fine here. Now it's time to start stripping out levels of infrastructure again. Actually, no, I'll do that off camera. I know it's not the most riveting content. I'll be back once... Oh, I'm not... I'll definitely strip the... Uh, I've, I've already stripped the Hungarians, haven't I? Haven't stripped them fully. Need to get a couple more factories. So, yeah, I'll quickly run over all of our puppets. Make sure they don't have any industry. That kind, Well, not all of our puppets. Um, the ones that I don't want to have industry, like Kurdistan and stuff like that. I'm not sure yet what I'll do with the Poles and the Prussians because they are significant states. Like, as you can see, like, you know, the ones that we've written... Like, Turkey's big, don't get me wrong, but it's not exactly highly populated... Uh, and it wasn't exactly industrious to, to begin with, especially once this was ripped away from them. You know, this was ripped away from them. Uh, the Bulgarians, the Bulgarians were decent enough to be fair, but you know, uh, ancient enemy of Bulgaria, an ancient enemy of Romania. That's all that had to be done. Hung Hungaria, uh, which I, <laughs> I have a fondness for calling them Hungaria because everyone around us ends in IA. You know, everyone around them rather. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. I I, I feel like ripping the industry away from the Poles and the Prussians would be a mistake. I just... I feel like we need to develop more independent powers, you know? Or well, semi-independent. Uh, you know, obviously they're still puppets and they're still in the faction, but they're a lot more independent than, say, the likes of the Slovaks are. Especially once they start using their own industry to start getting units out. Yeah. I think I might leave the Poles and the Prussians alone. Um, yeah, we already do have a large enough f uh, military as it is. I've, obviously, yeah, I'm going to mess with the Ukrainians. So, yeah, I think I'll... The, uh, with the exception of this oil here, I might get some resources here. I, I might do something with the resources. Uh, whatever I decide, I will tell you after I've done it. All right, here we have it. So, we have completely stripped Western Ukraine of industry. They have absolutely nothing whatsoever. Furthermore, we have taken control of their resources. We also ripped out every single level of infrastructure they had, ex Ooh, apart from this area, apart, uh, as well as except for the areas where they produce resources, in which case I shifted around Ukrainian infrastructure so that it maxed out on their resource producing areas. Apart from that, they literally only have two levels of infrastructure outside of their resource producing areas. And in exchange uh, for... And, well, I say in exchange, there is no exchange here, apart from us taking their shit. Um, what I did with all of their resource, uh, their infrastructure is, I finished off the Romanian infrastructure plan. Literally, like, green. Like, green. Like, uh, I think, like Trad said, we are, we're as green as a summer forest. And we're Legionnaires, so we're green, so it works so many ways. And we also have, you know, a fully green infrastructure map. So, yeah, level 5, the entirety of Romania. God love infrastructure. When it comes to... The Prussians and the Poles, I have generously decided to take not a single ounce of their industry, nor uh, take control of any of their resources. Of course, I'm still going to purchase it at a pittance through the trade system, but that's better than taking direct control and selling it off as our own industry, or our own uh, resources, rather. Plus, when you take over control over resources, it, it reduces the amount of resources in that area. I really hate that. Uh, we are working as well on our excavation techs. I'll probably work on this and we'll finish up, yeah. Um, so that we can get better resource extraction. I'm not sure if that applies to foreign resources that we have control over. But either way, yeah, control over Bulgaria's resources, Turkey's resources, uh, Ukraine's resources, Hungary's resources, Slovakia's resources, and that's pretty much it. Actually, speaking of... When I say speaking of, I was speaking about Kurdistan. They actually have three mills right there? Okay, I'll take that, thank you. Uh, pop it in some Transylvanian province. Put it in Krasana. Perfect. Bump up the industry there. People love us. I mean, can you, can you imagine being Romanian, uh, uh, Transylvanian Romanian right now? You get liberated by Romania and suddenly all the industry starts flowing in. There's jobs everywhere. Industrial output surges. Fucking um, standard living skyrockets. Just, oh, it's, it's, good to be, it's good to be a Romanian. But uh, is that off? Yeah, that's off. Good. So we'll just let that take effect. That's fine. Get a little bit more aluminium from the Russians. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, I, I might, I might flip Ki uh, Kiev back to the Russians. I'm not too sure. Like, obviously, it's the mother of all Russian cities, but they perform so shit. You know, what can you do? But yeah, yeah, we're definitely setting up uh, Pol the Poles as well as the Prussians to 
join us in some sort of independence. Obviously, they're both puppets, they're both in the faction, but they have complete control over their own industry. Um, I think. Uh, well, not really, but uh, they're a hell of a lot more independent than the rest, is, is what I'm getting at. Now, toward the chapters again. Yes, indeed. Reading the Legion? I really don't think that's necessary. Uh, ooh, that gives us an additional 11 factories. Fantastic. Uh, what do we pump that into? Some, something worthwhile now. We don't really have tank research started, do we? No, <laughs> we really don't. Uh, perhaps anti-aircraft guns? Yeah, that, that could be a worthwhile endeavor. Or we just adopt the, you know, the... Never mind. Um... Uh, yeah, I think we'll get cement here. Yes, and we now have UDR, which is absolutely fantastic. Apply that to our artillery as well. And... How would we get out this new division? Obviously, we currently have, um, you know, three for every for every uh, support battalion. We have you know three combat battalions. We have three you know frontline battalions. So I suppose if we're gonna get two two anti air. How much is uh, is each anti-air? It's only 30 guns. It's not too bad. So 60 and plus some support anti-air. That, that, that's, wow, that's 20, really? A frontline anti-air? Well, you know, frontline, you know. In, uh, well, yeah, combat anti-air is 30 and support is only is uh, 20. Damn, that's, that's crazy. But uh, so I, I guess we get 15 infantry battalions in response. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. By the way, we will put the, that, that 11 into the 37mm gun, which is a perfectly acceptable gun for 1941. And uh, we'll get working on these as well, 90mm, lovely. Working on, the, on those new 150 guns. Oh man, gotta love it. Now, Legionary Cooperatives, yes. Minus 15% consumer goods factories factor. Absolutely insane. Uh, yes, yes, here is, uh, here is where we are going to change this up. Uh, Prussian states. Yeah. It's, it's nearly more worthwhile to not grab their resources because we are on free trade. So we nearly just get more by doing it this way. Probably nothing we can do in that department. No, that's fair enough. Uh, subjects, some tungsten. No, really not a single ounce of tungsten in all of Germany? Damn, okay. Uh, Alright then. Fair enough. Uh, we'll, we'll keep buying from the Russians if that's the case. But this will save us a lot of civilian factories. A lot, a lot. Uh, yep, yeah, now we will build up these areas too. Build up those areas. Perfect. Finish off that military industry plan. We have a seriously respectable military industry for, Roma, for Romania. 90, uh, 95 military factories in so, I mean, it's only the 7th of March, 1941. That's the problem with these games. They're always over too early, you know. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't like... I wouldn't like for every game to go to 1945 and that kind of stuff. But, you know, damn, it's 1941 right now. I mean, you know, in our own timeline, the invasion of the Soviet Union hadn't even started. I, I guess that's what you get with alternate history. Damn, just the, the, the French outright annexing the Belgians, but not really doing the whole Rhine thing. Very sad. I, I do like to see a, a France up to the Rhine. Now, apart from that, I mean, what what else really is there? Radar and anti-air, yeah, pretty much. Synthetic refineries, actually, as well, would be... Yeah, no, we'll, no, we'll keep buying rubber. We will keep buying rubber, especially since there's so much here now, as well. I would like for many to be independent, but we, we simply have... Uh... Well, I suppose, I mean... Get one here, get one here, two here, that's already four, five, six, seven. And seven synthetic refineries could go uh, a decent way. Of course, most of it will go to, 80% uh, uh, of that will go to the, the market, but at least, you know, we have some sort of in-faction uh, rubber, 
And of course, you know, if shit ever hit the fan, we just go fucking limited exports and get most of it ourselves. Now, time to bring the Air Force back home. Done an excellent job. No, I didn't take anyone's air bases or anything like that. I didn't take anyone's ports. Now, Legionary Cooperatives. Consumer Goods Factories Factor minus 15%. The Old Guard gains power. Through the years of combat and rulership, our system of cooperatives has proven itself a useful way to make money and increase legionary uh, ties both between themselves and the average people. Let us expand our unique little trade and entrench our role in the country's economic system. Now, yes, everyone back home. That is fine. Get 500 here. Well, I, I suppose back home. I mean, we really we should be on the, uh, the front line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we need to go. Back to... Sorry, lads. I'm afraid... <laughs> No home yet. Uh, back up here to the front line. Well, the potential front line, I suppose. Order from the Kingdom of Hungary. That's fine. Get some. Need, yeah, I need to get some cast here. Uh, that's that's 400 cast. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, up there. Someone's go elsewhere. AI. Hey, I go home, damn it. <sighs> Just half the bomb at the castle up here. I see. Now they left. Of course. And just make sure that all of you are training. We already deploy new aircraft? And oh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, we'll do so right here. How many um, factory? Okay, uh, 20 is plenty. Not if we were fighting an actual proper gigantic, you know, total war, but 20 is uh, grand for now. Uh, the first thing I think we can uh, get working on is support anti air. So, where do we want that? I mean, you'd think it'd be before the artillery. Or yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Before the artillery, followed by the artillery, followed by. The field hospitals, uh, lodges, and signal company up to 13,400 men now. Fantastic. Have that filled in no time. Legionary Public Works, lovely. I don't roll on, I know I'm pausing a lot. Uh, what are people trying to give me? No, I don't want any air sort of aircraft like that. Improved anti air, no. Or aircraft anti air, whatever. Mendicorn Republic joining this faction. What? Oh, that's a nice faction. Okay, uh, Bohemia. Now is a good time. Uh, welcome to the faction. Uh, we can protect you from the uh, filthy Cindy's and uh, yeah, your pat off. That, that'll do. Russia's pat off. Serbia's uh, Yugoslavia's pat off. I think that's about it. Um, yeah, welcome to the faction. Damn, we've got a huge tree. We should closed up like uh, I haven't even started doing that yet. That's crazy. Yeah, a huge faction or a huge tree rather. It should all close up. You know the the trees that that weren't used. I don't need any. We've already brought the men into the army that need to be brought in. Yes. I'm sure some of you will now need to train up. Maybe actually 42 divisions. Germans. That's where the industry is. How many men do you have? Yeah, you've got a huge army. Sardinia's gone. Yeah, nice industry. 42 and 39. You've more industry than the Prussians.
here's the question, you see, because we, we can do this every game. Do we go for the rest of Europe? Because, you know, the, 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 there's very few Cold War scenarios that I actually do in these games, you know, because it's just so fucking easy to win. Usually the Cold War scenario, like we did with the Bandera series, is us versus the British. But, you know, there's usually never anything uh, in Europe. Cold War wise, I mean, it's only 41 for God's sake. Or do I just enable focus on autocomplete and start blitzing through the focuses? How many men do you have? A lot of men. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not, uh. Let's not get a bit big headed here now. We only have fucking, what, 2,000 aircraft? 2,500, 3,000? 2,100 aircraft. We have 2,100 aircraft. We don't have any tanks. Um. As large as our industry is, it ain't that big. And we've had to strip Bulgaria, Hungary, Slovakia, Turkey, and West Ukraine to get that industry. Apart from that, there's the Greeks. Again, uh, not sure. Yeah, that's, you know, no tanks. No tanks. No, no tanks on the Russians. No tanks. Is, it, is there no tanks at all? Yeah, no tanks. Uh, the Prussians don't even have a division now. You know, it's kind of a good place to leave it, in my own opinion. Hmm. Strict party membership again, yeah. And I'm just thinking, like... American Civil War still ongoing? Yeah. Or maybe, I don't know. Do they really have... Do they have international members? Yeah, they've got Chile. They've got... Paraguay. That's it, though. Build up for a period, maybe. Maybe by the time we get to the end, the folks will be in a better position. Uh, how are we? How, yeah, it's the fucking navy. That's what's doing it. Okay, Malta. It's like this. All right. You. How many? How many men do you have? Got a huge, huge number of men for some fucking reason. Um. We're just gonna say, apart from that, it's yeah, it's literally just Malta, uh, Russian Republic, uh, White Peace, Malta. Yeah, there we are. That's that. So the Maltese can be doing whatever they want. I'm sure the French will invade them or something. And uh, with that, yeah, yeah, with that, if I can go back to training. I was trying. I was like, what the fuck are you like? Uh, you know, why, why is the fuel being sucked up? No, it's alright. Now, centralized power. Yeah. Now, agrarian price controls. 50 political power or 5% nat pop support. The old guard gains power. The market, while a useful tool to attain great wealth for our nation, can also be an unyielding malefactor for the poor. who will end up having to resort to bartering up or subsistence, farming to get the foodstuffs they need no longer, for we will impose a set of relatively static prices for basic foodstuffs that year. So now the basic price for bread, as imagined by everyone, shall be the one dictated by us. Damn, let's do those fairly quick, didn't we? Uh, of course, we'll be able to make more of these once we uh, get 1941 into industry tech, which is right here, actually. I'm swapping with that. Apart from that, I mean, radar, you know? Radar. Radar and lots, and, uh, lots of it. good as well for the people to get a break you know like i said we've been in constant war since 1937 
And after that, just a massive amount of anti-aircraft guns. I want to be completely unassailable to bombers. Ideally, without even having to use an air force, depending on how lar large the, the bomber force is, that is, that is. If it's too large, we will have to put up fighters to intercept, but apart from enemy, hopefully not. Now we're filling that up nicely. Still up upgrading those. Probably, honestly, slash back on that a bit. Yeah. I think do something like this. Something, something that that's, uh, will result in me not having to produce, to import more resources. Yeah, that'll do trucks. Almost five full stacks. Fantastic. The old guard coalesces. Coalesces? Is there a difference? Uh, we just got another factory. Okay, so now we will probably will have to import something. Except maybe tungsten? We almost have those guns. 137 days. Okay. Uh, just, yeah. Infantry equipment. There we are. The old guard coalesces, safeguarding modest tenure over the Transylvanian chapters of the legionary movement. While a successful move in terms of binding the chapters across the Carpathians have also given the so-called old fighter caucus a great deal of influence due to having almost free reign in spreading their view of legionary ideology across the Carpathians. The share of legionary members adhering to the old guard's tenets of agrarian populism tinged with heavily orthodox mysticism. Inspired rhetoric has dramatically grown while Mote is loyal to his brother-in-law. He and other members of this caucus have become emboldened and their likeness to talk back to Kojano over decisions he wants to make has grown according Concerning, indeed, the old guard greatly gains power. We get local manpower plus tenants in uh, eight states. So, old guard goes from minus five to minus three. It says greatly gains power and only get two. We're still on 21. We're far ahead of anything they can do. Like, they're literally all in the minuses. Even added together, they would make more minus, you know? Excavation three, please. Actually, uh, back, back to construction. Cancelling non aggro packs. Very aggressive. Yeah, we definitely did get an increase there. I think we were at 737,000, and went up to 817. Aggression packs being cancelled all around. Two Sicilies. Ooh, a naval landing. The UDR, yes. Rapid fire, and then just guess literally everything else. Uh, stable platform, 10% breakthrough through easily. No real choice there. Prove direct. Toad anti tank, toad anti air. Yeah, that's, yeah. Easy choice there. Just going to stick with anti-air and not make any anti-tank, because uh, anti-air, especially as, as you progress, basically turns into anti-tank, doesn't it? Uh, heart attack, 15. I mean, double, okay, it's double the heart attack, but it's the piercing you want. 88 in comparison to, okay, 125, shit. 90mm has got way better penetration than 75mm, obviously. Um, you know, the game's just weird like that. Centralized power gets meant a grand conference, yes. Finland's gone. Uh, oh yes, right here. Nice. Nice to change flag, finally. Now, a grand conference. The last few weeks have been a flurry of activity as the halls of the Green House have been prepared for a, conf a conference between the captain of the legionary movement, Cornelia Cordiano, and certain high-ranking members of the movement from Ion Mota to Radu Miranovici, uh, Mira to the firebrand Prince Cantacuzino, all the way to the worker corps representatives like Georg Klim and Horia Sima. After being seated, the invitees were left alone in order to wait for the captain's arrival. Ion, why do you think we were called here? I don't quite know, Radu, but it must be important given the, uh, given the audience. All chatter stopped as soon as the doors opened, revealing the captain himself, clad in a folk suit and determinedly gazing forward. He confidently strode in before seating himself before everyone. After crossing himself and saying a silent prayer, he began to speak. Legionaries, comrades, I declare that I that recently I have been under uh, heavy duress owing to my duties of the Legion of the Fatherland. However, I had a dream I had to visit the country as I did in ages past, so I did. 
I saw the golden fields of Montania, the rolling hills of my native Moldova, the uh, vivoidal forests of Bukovina, the Carpathians in Transylvania. I have seen my beloved Rarau once again. Is that his wife? I'm not too sure. I'm not too familiar. Or is that a place? Is that his hometown? I don't know. Was Codriano married? I don't know. I do not know. I don't know particularly a lot about Codriano, at least in terms of his personal life. I have gained insight once again as to why I raised the battle cry all those years ago and why I fight today. I have also realized that factionalism, that scourge which has torn apart the country for so long, has re-emerged within our ranks. Though not as pronounced, it still has the potential to tear us apart, though not, uh, uh, well, not anymore. I hereby declare that I will not step down, though I will appoint some of you as vice premiers to ease the burden. A cabinet restructuring will also take place, and I will also reform the legionaries' organization to further our unity. Division is not acceptable within my ranks. The conference continued and at the end. The Legion left the halls more unified or uh, more united than ever. The host of the Archangel no longer debates itself. Fantastic. 5% based ability. Uh, there we have it. We, there we have it. We have centralized power. Uh, the king under surveillance minus 10% pad out support Nikolai the first uh, Nikolai the first gets king under surveillance plus 5% uh, political power gain the kingdom of Romania will be known as the Romanian legionary kingdom so as legionary kingdom of Romania would also work uh, while the institution of the monarchy is respectable, it is clear that it must be kept from intervening too much within our affairs by making sure that vital court offices are always staffed by our men. We can reduce the king's maneuvering room enough that he will have no choice but to cooperate. If the king is a symbol of the nation, he must not stand in the path of its will as embodied by us. What is this faction that people are joining? Fraternity, the International frater, uh, Fraternity uh, de Salu Noir. The what? The what black? Salu Noir? It's not the Black Sun, is it? Salu is hello. I really don't know, but it's your faction. I don't know. Brazil joined us. Abyssinia has joined us. Looks like a new power is emerging. Are you, are you like the only one in your faction? I think you might be. Sad. <laughs> Sad stuff. Now, Great Union Day. New holiday, grace of the calendars of Romania for this fine day. Uh, two o'clock in the morning, uh, 5th of July, 1941, has been designated as the Great Union Day, celebrating the completion of the national unification process exactly one year ago. Once more, the country drapes itself in blue, gold, and red, and green, soon enough, as Romanians celebrate the tearing down of the final border, splitting their people apart, parades, cookouts, friendly gatherings, sweep the country from west to east. As children and adults alike celebrate the introduction of this new holiday, whatever divisions there are in Romanian society temporarily dissipate in the aura of brotherhood that is being spread all around, as the sentiment of joy over no longer being split eclipses everything. With the last barriers of the Romanian people torn down, a sentiment of optimism ensconces itself among the populace. Now that everyone is united, nothing can stand in the Romanian people's path to greatness. As the day draws to a close, fireworks, also, uh, fireworks shows take place throughout the cities and towns, while people either withdraw for the day content with the festivities, or continue celebrating into the night joys over the brotherly union. Brothers shall always brothers be. 15 positional power. And here, filling up nicely, just in case I forget to get through the commune on it, the uh, international has quite a lot of aircraft. And our faction really does not, apart from us and the Russians. Now, oh, finally, disperse support. Damn, we can damn near call up a regiment each month in terms of recruitment pop. Two Sicilies is gone, yeah. We get through this radar so quickly. It's really nice. Uh, that'd be really nice if we weren't ripping out other countries' infrastructure. Now, legionary industrialization. Uh, Satu Mare gets two building slots, one military factory, one civilian factory. The legionary worker corps gains power. I don't think it matters anymore, though. The Romanian nation may be eternally indebted to its peasantry, but a strong nation requires a strong industry as well. By unleashing our people's energy, steered by our guiding hand, we will successfully attain our goal of a strong industrialized nation capable of facing the future while respecting the past. 
Uh, you know, we probably should create a... Uh, a intelligence service. Oh, look, yeah, we literally have a, an actual proper one. Oh, God, it was like S-S-L-I-M or something like that. The... No, I'm just going to call it the LIA, the Leg Legionary Intelligence uh, Agency. Intelligence Service, I think it was. I want to get that uh, compliance buff. I want to get this high, because I do eventually want to core this stuff. Fall of Lisbon. How many volunteers could I send you, actually? Just three? Okay. That's still a core, I suppose. Yeah, honestly, that's probably a pretty good idea to send uh, to send some mountaineer divisions. Plus, we were talking about doing it, but we didn't actually do it because we were busy fighting other people. Plus, Carlos Spain has made a nice little comeback, so... Be good training for our air wings as well. Dispersed Industry 4, fantastic. Use this on the synthetic refineries. Ah, what else? Oh yes, excavation four, fantastic. Ah, our divisions have arrived. It means our aircraft should be able to head over as well. Uh, I did select to send uh, air, send you air volunteers. Yeah, I did. So why can't I? That's odd. Huh? It's annoying. Our craft are quite useful. They have a doctrine. Yeah, convoy escorts. What have we actually got here? 100 surface ships, 78 destroyers, 6 light cruisers, 4 heavy cruisers, 11 battleships, 1 battle cruiser. Very nice. And 41 submarines. Now, here we have it. I'll actually, take uh, Antonescu. How long you don't take to arrive? That's fine. In any case, I'll reorganize these men. Just do something like this. About to balance it out a little bit. Four Romanian divisions, my god. Make sure I'm doing this right. Attenzione. Now, I can make a trip down here. Oh, I didn't incorporate the anti air into here yet. Send volunteers to the wrong fucking country, Russia. Ah. Oh. Ooh. Well, that's awkward. 
Of the Yugoslavia's joined the Aeon Taunt. Uh, no, no, you haven't. No. Can't trust them. What are you talking about? They literally just lost Italy, you stupid. Back in. What? Did I mess that up? By the way, you're not in the Entente, that's all that matters. Why isn't this working? No, this, no. Okay. Maybe. I would have liked a bit of fucking notice first. I mean, really, the Entente? No, oh, Perfidious Albion? No. Mm. Alright, fine. I'll go kill him. Go back into the Entente. But bear in mind, I'm not ready. Well, I suppose I kind of am ready. I haven't got my troops on the border anyway. Uh, it's you, yeah, you'll be coming back pretty damn soon. Uh, is, is there, isn't there not a recall volunteers thing? Uh, recall volunteers. There we are. Beautiful. Sorry about that, Carlos Spanby. You're going to die. Uh, as for you, however, you're not going to die. No, sir. I imagine you goes. Yeah, you goes. Got its troops ready. All right. Well, if it's time to blitz, it's time to blitz. Everyone get into position. I'll get the aircraft ready. Why do we get redeployed up there? Eight hundred, four hundred, four hundred, perfect. Well, actually, yeah, some of you. Yeah, we'll blitz it that fairly quick. Don't worry about that. Collapse of the Portuguese Empire. We are still training up. That's good. Keep doing that. Now you suddenly want me to join the war. Well, we're not yet in position, so I'll have to wait. The Entente Air Training Scene. We've been invited by the Canadian government to join the large-scale multinational air training program. Oh, we know plenty about air training. We got, we got like, what, 3,000 aircraft? 3,200 aircraft. How many aircraft have you got? Yeah, that's what I thought. It would strengthen our alliance and improve the skills of our pilots, but it may be seen as a concession to Canadian dominance of the Entente. Uh, yeah, of course we're going to join. 20 air experience, 10% ace generation chance, plus 10% air experience gain, minus 10% air accidents chance, and they get 30 penny novice. Air doctrine right off the bat. Lovely. Now, I will join all of your wars, and I will call everybody in. And we will blitz through Germany. Second Russo-Japanese war, yeah, I bet. Paris against Moscow. The Second Velky did not end with Germany's fall, but continued as the Entente and the Internationale clashed in North Africa and in the North Atlantic. Now, renewed hope that the Entente is lit in the forges of the Russian war machine. That's the Romanian war machine, I think you mean. 
All along the border between the Russian and French spheres, Sir Winston Churchill's twilight struggle has erupted into a struggle for world order so bloody it seems to put the struggle of 1939 to shame. Beyond the front lines, the citizens of the warring powers are endangered like never before with the advent of aerial death machines that could obliterate whole cities within hours of declarations of war. As both sides mobilize the few remnants of the pre-war peace wonder, will Europe ever rest with the Russians on our side? Victory is assured. Now, Rakovsky retires from PSR leadership. Christian Rakovsky, until now one of the leaders of the Romanian Syndicalist Party, announced his retirement at the Party Central Committee. His position on the committee and leader of the informal vanguardist faction has been assumed by his protege, Georg Georgiou, born in Bulgaria. I mean, he's, he's a Cindy and, and he was born in Bulgaria. Could he be any more traitorous? Maybe he was born in Hungary. Which is no longer the Kingdom of Hungary. What happened? How are you socked then? What? Why have you all left? Oh, no, it's just Hungary. Okay. I was very concerned there for a second. You can't just leave the faction and not be a puppet, you stupid. Back to being an integrated puppet. Who are you? Now, return Australasian lands. Oh my bad. Do we, we, do we still have something going on there in the Pacific? Oh, bro, I kind of forgot about that once we dealt with the Vietnam thing. Oh, of course, we still have a couple of those islands, don't we? Or do we? No, no, I did, I did give them to the Japanese. I knew it. Oh, yeah, we got shit here. Yeah. We got shit right there. Not bad. Caroline Islands. Uh... Just that, or is that part of the... Yeah, it's part of the Carolines. Got the Marianas as well. Give that to the Japanese. I know we're at war with them now, but hey. Anything else? I hope not. If there is, I'll try and figure it out. Now... He settled in Romania in 1904 after inheriting his father's estate. Already a committed revolutionary, he wrote for the public controller's newspaper, Romania... Uh, Unisatoare, and will be expelled from the country in 1907 for rebellious agitation, and again in 1911 after secretly returning to Bucharest. In exile, he remained dedicated to the public controller's cause in Romania. After becoming involved in the Russian civil conflict as a diplomat for the Reds, when they were defeated, Rakovsky was one of the many former Reds to find themselves in revolutionary Paris and would continue to represent the Romanian public controller's movement abroad as a member of the Third International. After decades of service, the old revolutionary is deemed it's time to cede his place to the younger generation. Georg Georgiou has taken his place as leader of the PSR's informal left wing. These public controllists are irrelevant, you better believe it. I trust we have air superiority. Ooh, they're contesting us as well. Good. Contest us as much as you want so we can shoot down your entire fucking air force. Now we're going to start taking casualties. Oh, yeah, Prussia went up to... Oh, no. No, what? You're also no longer... Pu what the fuck is going on? You're not a puppet either. Did they take away all of our pu... Fucking... Canadian on top. Oh, at least you're still a puppet. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm going to leave the episode here. Uh, and I, I must go, uh, Next episode, I'll go through and reacquire all of our puppets, however many we've lost. But all right, lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I know, I'm not, I know not a whole lot happened. Uh, we were just working our way through the folk street. It happened more towards the end when Russia decided to join the Anton for some fucking reason. How only Denikin could do some shit like that, I swear to God. And, now, and after how poorly he performed as well in the previous war. It's only after getting about an extra fucking 400,000 men out. But uh, yes, we are now at war with the International. We do, you know, we might outnumber them. Co Prosperity Sphere, that doesn't matter. We won't be fighting them. Well, Russia will, but we won't. Philippines doesn't matter. Isn't Public Control is Union actually does matter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because of Turkey and Kurdistan and all that stuff. But yeah, Entente, I mean, we do have a lot more industry than they do. Anton has suffered 4.4 million casualties. 353,000 Belgians. That's horrific. 321,000 New Englanders. Three quarters of a million French national state. Do you know how few men they have? That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Almost half a million Portuguese. 324,000 uh, Italians. 627,000 Indians. 264,000 Afghanis. Almost 400,000 Canadians. Oh, okay, most of it, okay, a lot of it came from this. Okay, that's good. 
Feed them vermin like no facts and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. That's just, that doesn't add up to 5.31 million. Who, who, who suffered a ridiculous... Okay, 4.4 million, rather. I feel like that still doesn't add up. Well, I, uh, I guess maybe, yeah. But alright, lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, as well as commenting down below. I shall see you in the comment section of this video, and I shall see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.